Praise the Lord. My name is Sister Judy Groove, and I welcome you to the Fisherman of Men Church, located 3641 Georgia Avenue, Northwest Washington, D.C., and I'm so glad that you decide to be with us this morning, this Sunday morning. And while we wait for others, please go on and hit share so others can join us. And while we wait for others, we're going to sing a little bit of What a Mighty God We Serve. What a mighty God we serve. Praise the Lord, everybody, and everybody praise the Lord. My name is Elder Jael Russell, and I greet you all in that wonderful name, Lord Jesus Christ. And we thank and praise God for each and every one of you this morning for tuning in to the Fisherman of Men Church live stream broadcast. And at this time, I'm going to give you an opportunity to put in your prayer request in the chat. And while you're putting your prayer request in the chat, I'm going to give honor to whom honor is due. First, giving honor to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who's ahead of my life to the founder of the Fisherman and Men Church, the late Bishop Clarence Groover, to our interim pastor, Bishop Elijah Solomon, to Mother Nettie Groover, to Minister Anderson, to Deacon Peavy, to all the saints of the Fisherman and Men Church, our guests and our visitors this morning. We greet you all in our wonderful name, Lord Jesus Christ. And for those of you that are just joining right now, you still have an opportunity to put your prayer request in the chat. And this morning we'll be coming from the 122nd Division of Psalm of David, Again, that's the 122nd Division of Psalm of David. And when you have it, please say amen. All right, I hear some amens. I'm going to give you a few more seconds. All right, I hear some more amens. It reads on this wise. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built as a city that is compact together. Whether the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, unto the testimony of Israel, to give thanks unto the name of the Lord. For there are set thrones of judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the priests of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. Peace be within the walls of prosperity, within the palaces. For my brethren and companions' sake, I will say, peace be within thee. Because of the house of the Lord, our God, I will seek thy good. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Let us touch and agree together this morning as we go before the Lord in prayer. And trust and believe before we start praying that God is going to work it out. I'm believing with you this morning that our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, is going to work it out. In fact, he's already working it out even before we start praying. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you, Lord, for this day that you have made and have given us another opportunity to rejoice and to be glad in it. Lord, I'm praying right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Lord, for all the prayer requests that were entered into the chat this morning. Lord, we just want to say thank you, Lord, for being a prayer hearing God, a prayer answering God in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, I'm praying right now in the name of Lord Jesus Christ, Lord, that you touch those, hallelujah, oh, that desire to be healed this morning from the crown of their heads to the soles of their feet, Lord, for by your stripes. 
They're healed, Lord. Lord, visit those, hallelujah, that are in the nursing homes this morning. Visit those that are in the hospitals this morning. Visit those that are on a bed of affliction this morning in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, Lord, let those that are watching the broadcast feel your healing power right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Lord. Lord, we're praying, Lord, for deliverance, Lord, upon our friends, our family members in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Lord. Set the captives free this morning for who the son, who the son sets free. It's free indeed. Lord, destroy every yoke, break every chain, break every fetter. Hallelujah. This morning in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Lord. Hallelujah. Prick the hearts of our loved ones, our friends, our family members, our co-workers, even the backsliders this morning in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, Lord, those that are lost, hallelujah. Those that are not saved, Lord, give them a mind, Lord. Hallelujah. To repent and be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of their sins and fill them, Lord, with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. Speaking in other tongues as the Spirit of God, give the utterance, Lord. Lord, we're praying, Lord, hallelujah, for those that are seeking miracles this morning in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ Lord oh Lord we know that you are a miracle working God in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ hallelujah Lord let your power come upon them your wonder working power this morning in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ perform that miracle hallelujah oh that we're all believing in this morning hallelujah to happen in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ open up that door that's closed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ close that door that needs to be shut hallelujah this morning in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ bless those Lord hallelujah oh that are believing you for a job in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ bless them with a job in the name of the Lord Lord Jesus Christ. Bless those that are seeking for promotion, Lord. Bless them with favor that they need, Lord, on their jobs with their boss. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, for that promotion. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Some of those are, some of us are seeking for direction, Lord. Oh, Lord, order our steps. Direct our path. Speak to them, Lord. Let them hear your voice clearly exactly what it is that you want them to do. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, set your peace, Lord. Send your peace with the pastors all understanding, Lord, upon those, hallelujah, that need peace, Lord. Comfort those that are mourning this morning. Hallelujah. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, for you are the God out of comfort. Remind them, Lord, if they draw nigh to you, you'll draw nigh to them. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, Jesus. For where the presence of the Lord is, hallelujah, is a fullness of joy. And at your right hands are pleasures. Oh, forevermore. And Lord, we be sure and careful to give you all of the glory, all of the honor, and all of the praise. In that name that's above every name, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen, amen, and amen. Trust and believe God this morning. He's working it out. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, remember, we walk by faith and not by sight. You be blessed in Jesus' name. Our God is an awesome God. Just sing with us and meditate. No
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Praise the Lord, everybody. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. My name is Angelica Hamilton, and I bring you greetings from Fishermen of Men Church, where brotherly love is more than a motto. I'm here to give you just a few announcements. First, you can continue to worship with us each Sunday morning at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. We'll be streaming live from our website, which is fishermenofmenchurch.org. We'll also be streaming live from Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. Secondly, you can worship with us each Sunday evening at 11.30 p.m. Eastern Time from myspiritdc.com, or you can download our church podcast. Lastly, please continue to participate in weekly online giving. There are three ways to virtually give. You can give by texting the word GIVE to 301-709-7233 to or you can give via our church website, which is again, fishermenofmenchurch.org. Lastly, you can give via the cash app, which is the dollar sign, F-O-M 3641. Thank you so much for tuning in this morning and God bless you. When he calls me, I will answer. When he calls me, I will answer. Fisherman of Man Church. Amen. Praise the Lord. Bishop Clarence Gruber Sr., the late Bishop Clarence Gruber, I am his wife. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Oh God, he's gone to be with the Lord. And I know he's listening for his name. And I'm going to be listening for my name. I love the Lord and I praise him. And uh, my church is the Fisherman of Men Church. 3641 Georgia Avenue, Northwest Washington, D.C. We are just so grateful to be here this morning to encourage you to get ready for that great day. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, that day when you have 
prepare yourself to be with the Lord, and you're going to be waiting, but you have paid the price. You have done what you should have done, and you can listen for your name. And that's what we want to do. So be encouraged. We love you. Thank you for your views that you sent in. They are so encouraging. And just pray. Let us pray one for another. In Jesus' name, amen.
Praise the Lord. My name is Sister Judy Gruber, and you are right on time for the Word of God. Praise the Lord. I bring you greetings from the Fishermen of Men Church, located on Georgia Avenue in Washington, D.C. Again, this is Pastor Bishop Dr. Elijah Solomon, and we greet you, amen, with the congregation and the people of this Leg legendary church and organization. Today, I want to speak from a word of God, and I want to talk on the subject, what's love got to do with it? Now, this theme comes from a popular song that was uh, a couple of decades ago, where the song words really said, what's love got to do with it? What's love but a secondhand emotion? And I want to just let us know that love is an action verb. Love is what we do. Love is how we act. Love is just not what we say. There are two words that begin with L, and I sometimes believe in this 21st century, we get them confused. There is a big difference between love and lust. Lust is seeking after the things of the flesh. Love is demonstrating the relationship between us and God and a true relationship between individuals. So today I want to just talk from that subject. Would you just lift your head with us in a word of prayer? In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord God Almighty, we come boldly to the throne of grace, realizing that all power is in your righteous hand. We thank you for another day that you've given us to praise and worship your name. Help us, Lord Jesus, to touch the hearts, minds, and lives of somebody. Help us, Lord, to restore the love of God, amen, among the people of God. And the love of God among those that know not Jesus Christ at this time in their life. Let them know that we are here reaching with outstretched arms to invite them to experience the real love of this life. And, and that is the love of God. I want to go back and say my subject today is what love got to do with it. I think that's a lost relationship. People have just become so distant and so easily to be upset today that love really doesn't have the meaning that the word of God gives us. I wanna read a text from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 22, verses 20, 37 through 40. Matthew chapter 22, beginning at verse number 37, it says, Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first of the great commandment. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments, hinge all of the law and the prophets. Jesus wanted to know, do you really love him? The question today to the people of God and to those that know not God is do you really love God? What's love got to do with it? We want to understand Jesus wanted his disciples to really love him and make the sacrifices that are needed to show that I am a child of God. When Jesus Christ was speaking in the Gospel of John, chapter 21, verse number 20, 15, Jesus said, when they had finished eating, in other words, he was about to go to Calvary's cross. So after he had supped with his disciples, Jesus turned to Simon Peter. He said, Simon, son of John, do you really, truly love me more than these others? Do you love me more than all of the rest of the disciples? Uh, what he was saying, do you really love me more than the rest of the disciples as you have boasted? Now, I look at the scripture and say, people are talking about loving God, but are they really loving him? What Christ wants to know, you boast about you loving me, you talk about you loving me, but do you love me more than anything else in this world? Jesus Christ had to address 
Simon by this more than one occasion. In Matthew 26, beginning at verse number 33, Jesus asked Simon, do you love me? The Lord said unto him, and Peter responded, yes, Lord, you know I love you. Then Jesus said, if you love me, feed my sheep. And again, he asked him, Peter, do you love me? And he said, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said unto him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him three times, how many of us today are offended by how often God speaks a quiet voice into our mind and into our hearts and ask us, do you really love me? In other words, he's saying, I want to know if your actions will speak louder than your words. He's asking Peter, he's asking us today, what's love got to do with it? Love has everything to do with our relationship with God. And then the scripture goes on and says, uh, Lord, you know I love you. Jesus said to him again, feed my sheep. Men in general need to save women in general, young people in general. God is speaking to us today saying, do you love me? Well, we answer yes. And I believe God will say, well, what's love got to do with it? If you love me, you will share the gospel of Jesus Christ to all manner of men. You will feed my sheep because we are the sheep of his pasture. We are the people that God is calling for to become a living testament. We are the Bible that some people will read. Our actions, when we love the Lord, will magnify him more than anything else. Now, when Jesus was talking to Peter, he used the Greek verb agapo in the first two questions. Uh, this means uh, ardently, supremely, perfect, and while Peter answered the verb, Jesus changed the tense to philo, which is to say to like, to be fond of, to feel friendship for another. The third time the Lord used this verb, which deeply humbled Peter. God is saying, I need you to be a friend of mine. Now, I need you to have fellowship with me. Uh, how many today, when I ask the question, you can type in on the comments where you are, I am a friend of the Lord. Uh, I love the Lord with all my heart. Uh, I love the Lord with all my mind and all my soul and all my spirit. Uh, well, if you can type that in there and say, I love him more than anything else. I love him more than life itself then he wants to know why don't you feed my sheep why don't you evangelize up why don't you disciple those that are coming to Christ why don't you teach the word of God more than talk about it why don't you live the word of God Jesus again in John 14 and 15 he says if you love me Oh, it's amazing if it's such a small word. Jesus had to ask the question, if you love me, keep my commandments. Uh, how many today are obeying the word of God? That's what tells God how much we love him. And that's what tells humanity how much we love him. Love will demonstrate itself. Uh, in Romans, the Bible says 12 and 19, and I'm going to quote from the New International Version, love must be sincere. I'm going to say that again. Love must be sincere. I'm going to say that again. Love must be sincere. Do you have a sincere love, not only for God, but for the people that God has placed in your life? Love must be sincere. He says to us, we must hate evil and cling to that which is good. We cannot hold on to things that are not in the will of God. We have to let it go. We have to break the chains that are holding us back from showing and demonstrating the real love of God. We must be devoted to one another in brotherly love. What's love got to do with it? Love will make us love our enemy. Love will make us do right when we want to do wrong. What's love got to do with it? Love shows that we really are disciples of Christ. Honor one another above yourselves. Isn't that amazing that the Bible tells us to esteem others 
higher than we esteem ourselves. You can stick your chest out and boast about all of the accomplishments you have, but when you come in contact with God's people, saved or unsaved, you need to lift them up. In other words, esteem them more than you esteem yourself. Paul says, my love must be sincere. Real love is sincere love. Paul said, love worketh no evil. And to his neighbor, therefore love fulfills the law. If we want to just be obedient to the word of God, then we must love our neighbor. We must love every brother and every sister in the body of Christ more than we love ourselves. As I read earlier, there is something about a lack of love. What does it mean to have a lack of love? Matthew 24 Verses 12 and 13 says, and because iniquity shall abound, because sin exists in this world, because animosity and apathy and hatred is creeping bigger and bigger into our society, the Bible says, because these things shall abound, what will happen? The love of many shall wax cold. And when your love wax cold, it is hard to demonstrate who Jesus Christ is. And it is hard to show the world how much we love God. What's love got to do with it? Love, the Bible lets us know, it's going to stand taller and bigger than any sin, than any coldness that comes our way. We shall, but he that shall endure to the end. That's what the word of the Lord says. You got to be able to hang in there. You have to be able to love others even when it's hard to love them. Uh, you've got to be able to do more than smile in their face. Uh, and you've got to do more than walk away and ignore yourself from them. Uh, love endures to the end and the same that do these things that show the love of God. The Bible says in Matthew 24 and 13, they shall be saved. Uh, they shall be delivered. Uh, God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly more than we can ever ask or we can even imagine when we show the world what love has to do with it. I read in the Gospel of John chapter 13 verses 34 and 35, Jesus says, a new command I give unto you. That command is that you love one another. Now it's amazing as I watch people that, that worship and praise God on a Sunday, but they do not do it in the rest of their life. He says, I give you a new command. He wants us to do more than just follow. Thou shalt not lie and thou shalt not steal and thou shalt not covet. Thou shalt not commit fornication and adultery. Those are good, perfect commands that we have to keep. But he says, I'm gonna give you one more command. And this is what Christ is saying. The new command I give you as that you love one another. How should we love each other? As Christ has loved us and has given himself for us. How shall we demonstrate what love has to do with it? We have to show it the same way Jesus Christ showed his love for us. Then the Bible says if we just show the world what love is all about, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples. Uh, if ye have love one to another. Oh, the Bible speaks so much about the need for love. Christianity needs more love today. I, I know we bicker and argue over little things. We major in minors, but we've got to start showing love to even those that are different from us. We got to show them that Jesus is the answer and love is the action that shows what God has for you. He says in Romans 8 and 28, Paul writes this, and we know that all things work together for the good of them that love God. Let me say that again. All things work together. That means the good things, the bad things, the things that you like, the things that you don't like, it's all working together for those that love God, to them which are called according to his purpose. Are you called for a purpose for which God has ordained and anointed you to be? Then you've got to show the world what love has to do with it, what the scripture tells us how to love God. I love 1 Corinthians 8 and 1. 1 Corinthians 8 and 1 said, we know 
that we have knowledge. We know that knowledge puffeth up, but charity. In the scripture, the word charity can be substituted for a synonym called love. Love edifying. Love edifying. Not what you know. Not how well you can quote scripture. Not how well you can wear a collar. Not how well you can dress in all of the white and all of the hats and all of the things of that nature. Love will edify. For if we have not love, the scripture says, we become a sounding symbol. We may speak in languages, uh, in earthly tongues that only the God that we serve can observe. But he says, but those things become sounds as if a clanging symbol. We've got to show the world what love has to do with it. God so loved us that we must love the world. But he didn't tell us he says but 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 didn't love one another if you don't love one another he said I will be nothing now Paul is writing to the church at Corinth and says if I don't demonstrate love I'm really nothing and now Paul was a prolific writer of the gospel he penned over half of the New Testament or portion thereof 13 letters I believe he wrote and he said I'm really nothing if I don't have love. We need to show what love is. What is love? Love is, these are scriptures, love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not jealous. Love is not boastful. Love is not proud. Love is not rude. Love does not demand its own way. It is not irritable. Are you still in love with God? Love does not rejoice in injustice. But here is what love really is. Love never gives up. Love never loses faith. Love is always hopeful. Love endured through every circumstances. That's what love has to do with it. We are able to yield to God's will no matter what the circumstance is. But love will last forever. That's what the prophets said. Prophecy and speaking in unknown tongues and special language, they will become useless, Paul said. When Christ comes back, the church will be raptured up. Those that have shown what love has to do with it, he's going to call us together. And those things that we've done in the flesh will be useless. But the love will last forever. We will spend eternity in the presence of God because we show the world what the love of God is all about. I'm going to close with the scripture from 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verses 13 and 14. The Bible tells us to be on guard. Stand firm in the faith. Be courageous. Be strong. In the midst of adversity, we have to still show what love has to do with it. Christ spent so much time instructing and teaching his disciples to love. And by them loving one another, they were able to draw thousands of people into Christianity. But he says here, and do everything. 1 Corinthians 13, 16 and 14. I leave you with this. Do everything with love. If you're watching this video, if you're watching us on Facebook, I want you to type in this word. I will do everything with love. What's love got to do with it? Love is how we demonstrate to the world that Jesus makes the difference in our life. What's love got to do with it? Love says we are disciples of Christ and by us living a life that loves God and loving one another, we shall show all men that we are followers of Christ. May the Lord bless you. May heaven smile upon you. And I ask that you will remember the church of our Lord Jesus Christ as we enter into our 102nd Holy Convocation. It will be a hybrid service. It will be a virtual service. And you can join us on the 21st through the 24th. 
virtually in the name of Jesus. We just want to show you what love has to do with it. In Jesus' name we pray. Would you just pray with us if there are any among us that are afflicted in their body, any that are troubled in their spirit, any that are seeking to know the love of God, we invite you to come be a part of a people that you can see the love of God by our love one for another and by how much we love you. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord God Almighty, let these simple words prick somebody's heart. Let it restore somebody that has walked away from Christ because you loved us so much. God, you gave all that you had. That's what love is about. In Jesus' name we pray. We give you the glory. Amen and amen. Stay tuned with us. Amen. Sunday after Sunday, as we come to you from the Fishermen of Men congregation, in Jesus' name, 11 o'clock on Sunday morning. Amen and amen. I love you, and there's not a thing you can do about it. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody, and everybody praise the Lord. What a word we heard this morning. I don't know about you, but I was extremely blessed by the word of God that we heard. And this right here is my favorite part of the service. Praise the Lord, everybody. It's offering time. This right here is a time where you can be a blessing, and we all can receive a blessing at the same time. And there's four ways that you can give uh, to support this ministry. The first one is via cash app, dollar sign, FOM, 3641. The second way to give is fishermenofmenchurch.org. You can also give via text 301-709-7233. And you can also give P.O. Box 43333, Washington, D.C., 20010. And we thank and praise God for you uh, in advance, those of you that are going to bless us with your contributions this morning. Let us go before the Lord in prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you, Lord, for this day that you have made and have given us another opportunity to rejoice and to be glad in it. Lord, I pray right now that you bless both the gift and the giver, Lord Jesus. Even bless those, Lord, that have a desire to give, Lord, that do not have anything to give, that you're blessed with something tangible to give the next time. And Lord, I pray, Lord, that you open up the windows of heaven, Lord, and pour us out a blessing, Lord, that we'll not have room in us to receive and rebuke the devourer for our sakes. And Lord, we'll be sure and careful to give you all the glory, all of the honor, and all of the praise. In that name that's above every name, Lord Jesus Christ, amen, amen, and amen. Once again, we thank and praise God for all of you, uh, for your contributions this morning. And remember, you are sowing into good ground at the Fisherman and Men Church. Expect your blessing to come sooner rather than later. And for those of you that would love to be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, please give the Fisherman and Men Church a call. And we'll be glad to baptize you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And for those of you that are still seeking the gift of the Holy Ghost, you can also call the, call the church as well. We'll touch and agree and pray with you that the Lord will fill you with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost, speaking in other tongues as the Spirit of the Lord gives the utterance. You be blessed. In Jesus' name. Thank you, thank you for being with us on this Sunday morning. And I would love for you to come back next week, Sunday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's Sunday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we would love for you to bring your family members. They can be anywhere in the world, but they can dial right in and be a part of this worship experience. Bring your neighbor. You might run into somebody this week and invite them to the morning worship service with the Fishman of Men Church. Again this week, we would love for you to show love. Oh, we have such need of love. I can never stress it enough. We need love. I love you. God's love is for everyone. Love on someone today and every day this week. See you next Sunday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time.